So in this tutorial we're going to be working with what I call the Abstract Aurora Theme. Now the original Aurora Theme is from Vista. I Yeah, Vista, they used the theme in it. And I think it's a really neat look. And uh, there have been a couple tutorials I've seen on how to do it. But uh, I was wondering how could I do something different with it. And so I started experimenting and I started making what I call Abstract Aurora. And that's pretty much where you take the original Vista style theme and you warp it and add a bunch of abstract uh, touches to it. And when you do this right, you should end up with something that looks kind of like this. And I think that's a pretty cool look, so I decided to do a tutorial on it. Alright, so first you're going to need a nature photo. Well, not specifically nature, but anything that's very vibrant. And nature photos just happen to be very good with this. So, I would recommend something that's nature, it's very vibrant. I was specifically using uh, this photo. I like this photo because it's got a little bit of that... It, it's Everything's mixed in, and it's hard to see. And so when you blur it, which we'll do in a minute, it, it gives a very... Uh, odd look and everything just feels so random and that's kind of what you want so first you're going to drag that into Photoshop alright now once you've done that you always want to duplicate it and then close the eye on your original background so you don't mess it up so you always have that to come back to uh, since we have the image on the desktop that's not really a big deal but I just do it as a safety precaution so anyways go to filter blur and Gaussian Blur. And you want to make this a pretty heavy blur. Now, I'm going to go ahead and settle with... Yeah, we'll just go with about 100. And it ends up with this. So, that's uh, very similar to what uh, the Vista styles all start with. All Aurora themes seem to start with a very vibrant photo where you Gaussian Blur it. And so you can do this, uh, just start from here if you want, but what I like to do is I like to copy this and then I go to Filter, Distort, Polar Coordinates, and I select Polar to Rectangular and push OK. And it does that. Then Control T uh, to uh, pre transform it. Then you right click it and I rotate it 180 degrees and push Enter. So then you have that, and then I just like to play around with the layer styles and see what I can get from that. And. Well, I personally like Linear Dodge Add. Uh, that seems to give an interesting effect, so I'm going to stick with that for now. So if you like what you get, you can always merge down and keep the layers. And I'm going to go ahead and name this uh, Gaussian Blur, just so I know what it is. Okay, so once you've done that, you need to start adding the uh, light lines, whatever you want to call those, that the Aurora theme seems to have the most uh, effect with. So we, you're going to need the pen tool for this. So I don't know if you're familiar with the pen tool or not, but you're going to have to have uh, paths selected and pen tool selected up to the top left. So those options will be there. So you're going to, going to want to zoom out for this uh, quite a bit because you need to make a pretty decent curve. And so uh, just go ahead and click somewhere at the bottom, like for instance there. And now that you have that, you go up and you click above the image, like so, and then you curve it. And you don't want to make the curve real heavy, because uh, as far as I know, the style doesn't have real heavy curves in it, but you can if you want. And then once you've done that, go around the image so that you don't interfere with it any longer. Then you can zoom in again once you're finished. If you right-click the path that's uh, there, you can click make selection. Once you do that, it'll give you these options. You can change the pixels if you want, the feather radius. I usually just leave it at zero. Alright, so it gives us this, a box around the image and then gives us this line. Then you just go to your brushes and just pick a soft brush. Uh, it doesn't really matter uh, what brush you use. There are all sorts that you can do, and that's part of the abstract, is just picking something that's your personal touch. And I'm just going to use a soft brush, I'm going to make it white. 
And make sure you, you're working on a new layer when you do this, because you don't want to paint onto your Gaussian Blur uh, uh, layer. Now, when I start, I always start below our image, so that the, it doesn't look like you're starting there and then coming in. It, it's better to just come in from the bottom, and then just streak upwards. Like so. And so then, once you've done that, oh, by the way, my opacity is uh, lower, it's about 58. Uh, if you want, you can make it higher or lower. It just depends on what you're you're feeling like at that moment. So I'm going to lower it down to 20, and then I'm going to go make another one that's a color. I'll just make this one a light blue. And then I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. Now, whenever we push uh, Control D to get rid of the selection, we have a very neat look. And so now I'm just going to do this a couple more times, uh, just to give us that look and feel. So, right here. Yeah. Selection, feather zero, and we'll, I'll go ahead and make this one, yeah, we'll make this one like maybe, maybe a green, maybe like a, a light green, well not light, maybe, maybe a little bit darker, and just streak that across, uh, increase the opacity, Alright, oh, one thing you do want to make sure is that it's, it would probably be wise to do each of these on a different layer. And I'll explain why in just a second. Alright, so we have two of these here. And I'm going to go ahead and move that one to the bottom, just because I think it will look better. Yeah. Alright, so now you want to play with layer styles. And this is, a, it isn't really that important, but you can get some neat looks when you do this. So I usually play with it just a little bit until I get something that I like. So I sort of like that. I have screen on the bottom one and screen on top. So, all right, and then you, I'm just going to merge them together, and we get that. Okay, so now that you have that, you can pretty much go with whatever you want and do all sorts of crazy things with it. I usually would add brush effects, like for instance, you can go into your brushes, and I I get custom brushes brushes from I think it's BrushEasy.com. And they have all sorts of nice ones that you can get from there, like this one, for instance. Go to here, and do that, and let's make it bigger. That, and then you can perform layer styles, or just add like an inner glow to it, outer glow. And you, get, you get all sorts of looks and effects. But anyways, in the end, if you play with it enough, you end up with something similar to that. And so, very simple effect to do. Um, People would think that this is like a professional job, when in reality, a, very, a beginner could easily do this. It just takes a little bit of time and effort to uh, play around with it and get some interesting settings. So, alright, well I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I think I should be posting more soon. So, thanks a lot.